why in the hell would anyone want to live in an RV? It's a 29 foot uh, Bigfoot motorhome, 1999, 45,000 miles on it. Uh, we just bought it a couple of weeks ago um, and we're retrofitting it to live in it. Um, so, a couple of reasons why one might want to live in an RV. Um, travel. I would like to travel more, but um, we've got a pes pesky payment we have to make and uh, you know it's going to take us a little bit of time to kind of get it ready to be off grid and um, you know to get comfortable in it. I've never even spent a weekend in an RV. Um, I rent Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's expensive. You know, a good part of our income ends up going to uh, to rent. Um, I love to own something. I own this basically. Um, um, property is extremely expensive, especially if you want to live any place nice. That's why we pay such like nine hundred dollars a month rent. But um, you know, we can walk to anything we want. And uh, the other reason that I rent is uh, you can easily you know get up and go anytime you want with 30 days notice um, nothing no ties don't have to worry about selling it um, but you know nonetheless I'd still like to own something and uh, I'd like to have something that's all my own um, we've actually looked at uh, a few years ago at uh, buying a piece of property and building uh, a small earthen home back in Pennsylvania or West, West Virginia and uh, it didn't work out um, it wasn't really the expense of the land. Um, it was uh, difficulty with building codes, considering that you know we didn't want uh, a conventional sewage system. We wanted a, a composting toilet, which uh, a lot of municipalities allowed, but you still had to have a sewage mound, sand mound, or a leach field of some sort. So um, we ended up moving out here and renting and enjoying ourselves in the city, and we are. And uh, we realized that we need to to downsize quite a bit. We have too much stuff. We don't usually buy new, but we, we buy we buy used or drag things home and repurpose them. Um, I love them. But you end up getting uh, buried in it. Uh, I drag everything home. Um, every little scrap of wood and every little motor or chunk of wire and before you know it you, you don't even know what you have. You, you, <laughs> you're buried in it and only rarely does it end up being useful. So. This is a little training exercise to learn how to live on live with less. Um, you know, efficient storage built in. Um, there's going to be, need to be more storage, but um, like I said, uh, just uh, just learning to live small, to live efficiently. Um, everything has to have a place in a motorhome. I mean, it's it's mobile. Um, uh, you can't have stuff laying around on your on your countertop if you want to go someplace. So, you know, it, it, it's it. You need to learn a little bit of uh, um, discipline. Keep it clean. Keep it organized. Um, and I need that. I need that. The, the one drawback of a, of a rental apartment or house is it never feels like home. It never feels like uh, um, I'm not even comfortable hanging a picture on the wall because I know it's going to come down. Um, and here, the day we bought it, we started ripping and tearing. Ripping and tearing. Ripping and tearing. Pulling stuff out. Saying, what do we want to put in there? What do we want to put in there? You know? Let's toss this thing out. Let's toss that out. It's ugly. It's useless. Uh, it's fun. I mean, I, I, I love it. I love owning something. I mean, you know, maybe an RV isn't for everybody. I mean, a lot of climates, it would be really difficult. Um, but I think here in uh, the Willamette Valley, I think it's going to be all right. Um, you know, I've always wanted to, to mess around with solar, solar panels, solar hot water, uh, solar heat. Um, you can't really do that with an apartment. I mean, it's not practical. But, but here... You know, we can build, we can bolt, we can wire, we can do whatever I want. Um, so it's it's really it's really quite exciting. Um, but you know, even with the the space that's here uh, for my wife and I and and two cats, um, yeah, I mean, there's times it's going to feel cramped, um, and you know, we'll work through that. But um, you know, in order to to, to 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 live full time in a space like this, it you need a little more space than what they're built for. I mean, they're built for uh, a weekend or a, two weeks or something, you know, a couple of people. You, you don't drag all of your personal possessions in something like this. Even with the basement storage that's here, I mean, I, I like the idea of, of just having just this rig and this rig only, but um, I'm a tinkerer, and in order to build and repair, I have a little workshop. It's going to be a tow behind. Um, this was purchased brand new. It's uh, 7 by 14 feet, 
uh, seven and a half, I think, actually. Uh, I got the ramp door instead of the barn doors. I thought this would be useful. I got some bone blocks underneath, and it's a little more workspace whenever it's down. Pull out some some saw horses or something and, and work. Uh, of course, I, I bought it bare, just just plywood, three quarter inch floors. Um, I like it. It's built pretty well. It's fairly pretty on the outside. I uh, built the workbench and the the um, the shelves and bought that door up at the rebuilding center. Installed a uh, my uh, toolbox I drug out here from Pennsylvania. And uh, it's got the man door on the side. Um, but th this space here, although it's primarily for uh, storage and workshop space, it might actually be a spillover for uh, some utilities as well. Uh, spare water, um, thermal hot water storage. Um, uh, the rig will probably have its own uh, uh, solar panels at some point. Uh, it's a battery system that may or may not be tied into the to the coach. Um, uh, you know that's 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 to come. Um, but it's really exciting to be able to have a space. It's just uh, again, it's learning to have a place for everything. Things are real messy right now because uh, I don't have a place for everything. It's it's still a work in progress, and uh, mostly it's been about this thing the last few weeks. Um, but just a couple ideas here for uh, um, maybe solar panels. Uh, likely any kind of photovoltaics would go on the roof uh, with some kind of a tilting mechanism to allow me to point them towards the south. Um, some consideration has to be made how you park it to get the best uh, southern exposure on the solar panels. And um, in addition to that, however I orient the solar panels, I have to think about what windows do I want to have uh, facing the south, giving the most sun, so that I uh, set up the, the PV array accordingly. Um, the other thing is um, solar thermal. Um, uh, here in Oregon, in at least this part of Oregon, it's awfully cloudy in the winter time and uh, the only solar thermal water setup that I know of uh, that works well and even this isn't even all that overcast but uh, in overcast uh, conditions is a, a evacuated glass tube uh, heat pipe systems. Um, and uh, they're still relatively expensive but uh, I've even considered uh, a friend of mine suggested maybe I, I hang them off the back in a, uh, you know, in a manner like this, um, and then uh, have them hinge at the top, and um, uh, some kind of a release mechanism at the bottom, unbolt them, and then put out kickstands to act almost like a canopy. Um, again, wanting to face face south, um, and uh, the back's an option. Uh, there's some space on the side here that's an option, um, and then of course the roof as well. Uh, as far as uh, any kind of solar uh, uh, hot air, um, uh, for a heating system in the winter time, you know there there might be a, um, a box of some sort, um, with black material, metal, um, um, possibly active with a, a solar powered fan or or, or passive, just uh, designed in such a way to allow for natural uh, uh, convective currents. Um, but maybe something closed in the window. I'm not really too crazy about cutting any holes in the side, at least until I. No system works really quite well, um, but you know, I'm pretty much yeah, all of my windows do open. So um, especially the ones in the back, they're very large, and they, uh, uh, the whole thing, whole half of it slides. <clears throat> so, um, but and, until winter, until winter, we need to figure out how well our heating system works as it is. Get an idea what the heating a space like this involves. Um, tiny houses are another option. I, you know, everybody looks at this and they say, "Oh, that's really neat." But I like those little wooden tiny houses on wheels, and uh, I'd agree. They're they're beautiful. They're expensive, um, and you need a tow vehicle. I don't own a tow vehicle. I own this now. This is my tow vehicle. Um, but in order to have some some storage space and some uh, uh, workshop space, I'd almost have to have a, a box truck uh, to tow it with if I wanted to. To move around at all like I, I can with this this setup and uh, the other thing about a, a tiny house on wheels is if you buy one fully ready to go with some water systems maybe compost and toilet I mean it's upward of forty fifty thousand dollars well upward um, and then to build one yourself uh, involves a skill set that I, I really don't have yet and um, and a knowledge base um, that I think I can learn from 
from the uh, the water and the heating systems in uh, in a rig like this. Uh, this is almost like a testing laboratory to figure out what works and what doesn't. I mean, it's already insulated, it already has plumbing, it's all ready to go. Um, you know, purchased it for a fraction of the price of a tiny house, and it has a drivetrain. Um, you know, and, and even perhaps in the future, we'll decide to modify a bus, um, kind of uh, gut it and, and build a home out of it. Um, maybe a tiny trailer. Uh, you know, it depends on where we end up, what we what works and what doesn't. Like I said, I uh, and of course, there's always the possibility of finding a piece of land or some like-minded people that have some land and and setting up there and, and building a more permanent structure. Um, meanwhile, having learned how to live in this small space likely would build a relatively small, efficient earthen home. Um, and I already have my home there. I'm already, you know, I don't have, I can take my time. I can, I can spend the money on it as I have it. Um, and, um, and no doubt I'd learn a lot from this. So we're really excited to be RV people, I suppose. It's not for everybody. I don't even know if it's for me, but we're going to find out. Thanks.